Hi guys and gals of World of Warcraft, Weasel Jr. here, and today I'm going to show you how to set up Trade Skill Master to use with your profession so that way you can get making tons of gold and well on your way to gold cap in what I think is the, probably the best way to make gold in the game. And that's through your professions using the auction house. And as you can see, it is quick to craft and post with Trade Skill Master. So let's get started so you can start making gold. I recommend pausing the video and having your game up and following along as I go through the steps to make it a lot easier for you. Trade Skill Master might be, seem like it's very complicated and uh, when you're learning it, it is a little difficult to learn, but once you get the hang of it, it's really easy. To open up the main menu to start adding groups and stuff, type backslash TSM. Then click Marco Setup right here and spam click this button. It'll help you out quite a bit later. Now, click Options, go down to Profiles, and come down to New Profile. You can name it anything you want, and hit OK. Now we've started a new profile, but it has no information. So, come over here, hit your profession, in this case, Enchanting, the TSM button, and it might have a screen over here that says, needing info on the TSM groups. Click create profession groups. Now it added groups right here. So now we can start adding groups. But first we're going to add a few key features that will make things a little bit more fun in the options. Come down to auction DB, auctioning, and then you can select a couple of sounds to hear when it's done scanning or when it's done posting or canceling. Okay, now that we have that done, click Crafting and go over to Profit Deduction and change that to 5%. That will cover the auction house fees. So that way when TSM goes to price something and can figure out whether you're making a profit or not, it will duck that from the price so that way you know you're making more gold. Then come up and click the green module options. Under Ignore Guilds, check mark any guilds that you are in that you wish to ignore so that way it doesn't count items in your inventory. This is especially important if you have glyphs as many guilds have glyphs in their bank and Trade Skill Master will not queue them up to craft if there's glyphs in that bank. Next, click MISC features and enable auction sales feature. You can choose any sound you want. Anytime somebody buys something off the auction house you hear and if they buy a bunch of stuff off and you're really raking in the gold, it sounds like this. The only drawback to the cash register sound and selling stuff is if here in the middle of raiding somebody starts buying 5,000 stacks of leather off of you and they're just racking them off, you can have problems hearing your ventrilo. Okay, come over and click the groups. And if you haven't clicked your profession ad groups, make sure to click create profession groups. Now you'll see that we have crafts, click over in management and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make subgroups. You can call them whatever you want, in this case I will call it wad web enchants. And we're gonna make a couple of groups and set them up and add items. So let's click management, new subgroup, we'll do wad cheap chance and then we'll make two more wad chance and finally boa web chance now that we have the groups we can start adding items into them you can either scroll through and click and then go one by one or you can speed things up by using the filter like mongoose. Now it's it. Type it in, hit enter, hit add, and it's in the group. We'll add fiery and then crusader. You don't even have to spell everything out, and anything with that word in the filter will pop up, like crusher or crusader. You can dehighlight what you don't want to add, and then hit add, and it shows up in the subgroup. Now for wad chance, we'll take and add gift of 
those are the higher quality ones so I want them in a different group than the lower cheaper breath of and there we go now for wad weapon enchants we'll just type mark of add and now trade skill master has a list of items but it doesn't know what to do with these items so we're gonna have to go in and give it some operations on auctioning and crafting so let's get started click boa weapon chance and then click operations and you'll see that it has no operations click override and create operation then we're going to name it BOA Web Champs. And the reason we're naming it the same is so that way as you add items, these operation lists will grow and it makes managing things a lot easier. It will ask if you want to associate it, you just click yes. Or another way to add uh, operations is to go into operations, click auctioning, which we are doing right now, and then type the operation name. We'll make one for WAD Chance. Click green operations. We'll make another for cheap wad chance. And then one more for wad weapon in chance. Click BOA web chance. And then click post tab. Well, first go back to general. And over here you can ignore low duration auctions. I usually ignore short less than 30 minutes so that way I can post at a higher price more often than not because the I'll post higher that short duration auction will expire and then I'll be the next higher up now post cap is how many it will put on the auction house at one time I'll put two because I make two BO weapon in chance at a time so I'll have it post two and since I don't monitor this group as as often I'll put it up for 48 hours we want the stack size of one because we want to sell one enchant at a time we're not going to keep any and sources to include and keep quantity you can take and choose if you want to use your bank or guild for that max expires we're going to ignore and bid percent we're going to go at 95 percent we're going to leave it at undercut of one copper so that a way the market doesn't drop down and things get too cheap and then where it says Minimum price, maximum price, normal price. This is where you set the price op options. For minimum price, I'm going to do 100% crafting plus 20G. And what that will do is it will take 100% of the crafting price and add 20 gold to that. And that's my minimum price that Trade Skill Master will post at. Now, when you click one of these boxes, you'll see a window open up here with different examples on ways that you can enter prices. You can do minimum, average, and max with quotations for different ways of coming up with your prices. Now, since this is enchanting, I will use crafting plus a set amount of gold for my profits where if I was using my blacksmith, leather worker, or tailor for transmog gear, I would be more likely using DB market or the world market prices so that a way if I make something that's worth 20,000 gold and it next up I make something that's worth 500 gold when it goes to post up on the auction house it'll post at the higher value of the market instead of the crafting percentage another problem with dealing with percent of crafting is sometimes you'll get a red arrow where it won't post an item because your normal price whatever you set it at will be below the minimum price if you do a hard gold limit like I'm about to do now you'll either have to adjust your prices or manually post it because sometimes some idiot out there will post one temporal crystal for 900,000 gold thinking he might sell it when the auction house is out of temporal crystals so therefore even if I have a 5,000 gold max price it will not post it because 5,000 gold is cheaper than the 900,000 crafting price maximum price is the max price that TSM will put an auction up for no matter what it is on the auction house now don't be afraid to go super high with your prices because I've had items go at max price and sell and it surprises me it actually makes me chuckle 
the normal price is the price that TSM will put something up if you're posting an item and nothing else of that item is on the auction house. This is where you can set your prices and make a little bit of money. Since these are for BOA weapon enchants, I'm going to have my normal price at 3750 gold. You'll be surprised. People will pay that much for old enchants. Now we got a price ranging from 100% crafting plus 20 gold all the way up to 15,000 gold. Now prices will hover in between there, but we got to tell TSM what to do when it's outside of those. If it's below the minimum, I normally have it post at normal or the minimum price depending on what I want it to do. In this case, I'll go ahead and have it post at the normal price. So when those lower price items sell off, it'll naturally reset the market to the higher price. When it's above the maximum, I'll have a post at the maximum. So say we got Fiery Enchant we just made. It cost us 5 gold to make that enchant. With these settings, our minimum price will be the 5 gold plus 20 gold. So 25 gold is our minimum price. If we're the only one posting that fiery enchant, it'll go up for 3,750 gold. If somebody decided they're going to put one up for 900,000 gold, our maximum price right now is set at 15,000. So they'll be at 900,000 and we'll put it up at 15,000 gold. Then we'll find it on the auction house and have a good chuckle and say, what the hell? Now, you can adjust how much you undercut, but I highly recommend doing just one copper. That way, you're the lowest auction, and the market slowly goes down and down and down and lower. If you undercut too much, you'll crash the market, and then nobody makes any gold except for the person who's buying it, because they're going to buy it, stock it up, and then wait for everybody else to run out of gold. I've done it before with people who have tried to take out the enchanting market. It's pretty funny. Now let's go over to cheap wad chance. These are the ones that take luminous shards, which on my realm average about 20 gold a pop. So we're going to set these up. And since I happen to have quite a bit of these, I'm going to put a post cap of three. So that way it puts three of them up at a time. We're going to have stack size one because we just want to sell one enchant at a time. We're not going to keep any and we're not going to enable the max expires. I love doing a 95% bid. Granted, usually with enchants, it's super rare to get bids. But if you're dealing with transmog gear, that happens more times than you think, where somebody will put a bid on something and not pay that little extra gold, even though they could get it right away. And you're still making a hefty profit, too, on most of those items. And just like with the BOA enchants, I'm going to do 100% crafting plus. 30 gold for my minimum price now if you happen to mess up and hit ok it'll still be flashing so say I misspelled crafting and I hit ok it'll still be flashing so you know that price that you set did not take my maximum price I'll just change to 2500 gold since these are cheap little enchants my normal price I'll set that to 2,500 gold in case the market happens to reset. Granted, I expect these enchants to hover between 40 and 100 gold. When below minimum, I'll have it choose to ignore auctions below minimum, so that way it'll post at my higher price. When above maximum, I'll have it post at maximum. And that's for the cheap wad enchants. Now let's go on to... The wad chance, the ones that take the temporal crystals. Oh, wait, I see somebody making a comment earlier that I put my minimum and my normal at the same price, my maximum. We'll take and change this to 3,500 gold. And now that I think about it, these are the cheap enchants for wad, so we'll change it to 15 gold plus crafting. There, now we're more likely to make gold because we lowered our price because they kind of go for cheaper. Moving on to Watt Chance, these take Temporal Crystals. So we're going to adjust the prices a little bit higher than what we would with the other ones. I'm still going to do a 100% crafting. But this time, I'm going to add 200 gold to the price. So say it takes 
400 gold to make an enchant. We're going to add 200 gold on top of that, and that'll be our minimum price. I'm going to change the post cap to 2. Come down here, maximum price. Since these are the higher end ones, we'll put the maximum price at 6,500 gold. Granted, I don't see it happening, but hey, it could. And our normal price of 3750 when below minimum, we'll post at our minimum. When above maximum, we'll post at our maximum. And there we go. Change the bid percent to 95, or whatever you prefer. Anywhere between 1 and 100. And we're set up to post those. Now the wadded weapon enchants, we're going to take it set to ignore, short or less, like I do on all of them. Our post cap, we'll do for 24 hours, I watch them. Our post cap, I meant, the post cap will do two. Our auction duration, I meant, is going to be 24 stacks of ones. Bid percent, 95. Undercut by one copper. Our minimum price, I'm going to do a crafting again. Just because it works out very, very well. As you will see later in the video on how I craft, I, I craft stuff. But I also force TSM to the current price. So that way I always know that I have accurate prices and I don't have to worry about losing gold. Since these are weapon enchants, we'll do 250 gold added to the crafting for our minimum. When below minimum, we'll post at our minimum, maximum. We'll put our maximum price at 5,000 gold. No, on second thought, these are weapon enchants. I've seen them go higher before. So we'll go up to 8,000 gold. It's rare, but it happens. Normal price, we'll do 3750 Just in case we're the only ones up, we'll post it at a decent price. So there we go, we got all the information for the WADA enchants to post. Now, you might be thinking, what if for some reason temporal crystals skyrocket? Well, we can just add 100% crafting plus... 3750 gold and then you don't have to ever worry about losing gold if they suddenly pop up and you don't realize it granted your minimum price would be lower than your normal price so you kick up that error but this will protect you a little bit more and you'll see what happens when you go to post them you'll make a bit more money because it'll include the cost of all 15 gems and then add 3750 gold on top of that so that is why sometimes it's better combine a crafting plus a hard gold limit for your prices versus going with the DB market or whatnot. So now that we have our prices entered, it's time to tell Trade Skill Master when to craft these items. Click the crafting tab and we're going to start making subgroups, well operation groups. BOA chance, WAD chance, and all those good ones. What chance? Click operation. Wad web chance. And then finally our last one. Cheap wad chance. Now you can take and make one operation and have it do for all. But with these different ones we're going to have different times for it to queue up you're gonna want your max restock quality is how many it's gonna have you restock at one time so if you have it set to three but you only have two it's gonna make one more and so on I'm gonna have it make two and post them up with a minimum profit of 5g now this is because I have fiery enchant which goes really cheap so it's always going to queue that one up and it'll also queue mongoose and whatever and then we'll have our prices in our posting in the auctioning tab to protect us from losing any money if the market finally calms down a bit and mats get cheaper cheap wad enchants we'll have it set at 10 at 15 g max restock I like to make one of those because I tend to buy quite a few of them. So we'll just make them one at a time. Wad chance. We'll set that to 25 gold. Profit. Put it at 1. It's pretty easy to put this. 
you could even take and have it set at 10,000 gold so that way if you don't want to make something until it gets really profitable say like a leather chest piece it won't queue up until it's very profitable and there we go now we have our crafting prices set up it's time to put them together with the groups so TSM will know what to do and we can get started making gold we're gonna go back up here to groups then we're gonna click BOA weapon enchants and click operations now this first one was put together because we come in through the view operation but it doesn't know what to do with crafting because we went in through a different way we're gonna go ahead and select BOA chance and we're just gonna cycle through all of them and add the operations that we made for each one of those now you see why I took and named them all similar because as your TSM operations get more and more it'll make it more easier to keep things organized and there we go TSM is ready to make you gold now I highly suggest you get the TSM application because of quite a few things. One, it auto updates prices for your realm and stuff and keeps them at roughly up to date whether daily or hourly or however often it updates so that way your prices are always current. Also another reason is is because it will automatically back up your information so should you lose your profiles for some reason you can go through the app and restore your profile. I just did that the other day and it was slick. Speaking of profiles you should log out right now so that way all your information you just entered is saved. Trade Skill Master will not save information until you have a normal, complete logout. So if your WoW crashes right now, before you log out, everything you did will be lost and you'll have to re-enter it. I've had it happen many times, and the first time that it happened, I spent four hours making a really good profile, only to have my computer crash and I lost everything. So log out often so that way it saves. Now let's do the auctioning part. If you just installed Trade Skill Master, you're going to have to scan the auction house. Either run a full scan or run all scan. But generally, when I'm doing with professions, before I go to post, I will scan the selected group so that way it updates prices and whatnot. If you just installed TSM, you're going to have to scan the auction house and even if you have the app when you first get trade skill master it will have no data to work with so it won't work really well it'll take about three to seven days scanning and auto updating until it sees all the items for it to start working efficiently and correctly okay open up your profession in this case enchanting and we're going to take a come over here to TSM groups you'll select what groups you want to restock click restocked groups and you'll notice that I have green and red items the or orange items the green items mean I have mats on hand and cr can create them right now the orange ones mean I have to get the materials so we're gonna take and hit gather and it'll pop up this gathering window right here now if you have other tunes it'll list their names on them and you can leave gathering up, log off, and go to that tune and get the mats by going over to their bank or whatever, hitting gather items when the bank is open, then running to the mailbox, opening it up, and mail the items to the tune that needs them. It works out really well. As you can see, I can retrieve sourceless air from Weezinator. Well, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to de-highlight that, so that way... Trade Skill Master will now be forced to buy the Sorcerer's Air off the auction house. Yes, I know I can save some gold by using Weasonator's Sorcerer's Air, but he uses them. Now we're going to open up the auction house, and you'll see that buy items popped up. You'll have to be on the shopping tab for it to work, and you click buy items, and Trade Skill Master will start scanning the auction house for items to buy. Then you click buyout, 
and then buy out again and you continue doing it until you have enough items for whatever you're making you just have to be careful because sometimes trade skill master will gather more items than you actually need in order to craft something it'll also look at different items to do in this case I can convert nexus crystals into small prismatic shards to make a large prismatic shard it'll give you the price that it thinks it's the percentage of in this case this small prismatic shard is 9% of the crafting price that it believes and there in with that is a very good way to make more profits because it's only 9% of the crafting cost or at least the projected cost there's also another way you can gather items you can take it open up your profession bring it up to the TSM side and then you can shift click the items that you need so say if I need large prismatic shards I can shift click the red and there I am and then I just have to manually count out how many I'm buying if I need eight I'll have to count it out in this case it looks like there's not enough of them so I'll have to either convert to small prismatic shards or find another way to get it this way seems to be a little bit better in my opinion of gathering mats because this way I'm manually controlling instead of relying on trade skill master to tell me how many items I need and risking it buying way too many I've had it happen way too many times that I very rarely use the gathering side for getting my mats after you buy them off the auction house collect your materials out of your mailbox and you'll notice your crafting queue will start to light up green and that drum roll was a sound that I assigned to TSM to let me know I'm done emptying my mailbox then you hit craft next and it'll start making the items if craft next is doled out but you have green you can click up here to create the item also sadly the making of this video there were no materials for mongoose so we're not going to be able to make that one that queued up after you crafted your items run to the auction house click auctioning and then click start post scan it'll start scanning the auction house and undercutting all the auctions by one copper if there's one up as you can see right here this one is below minimum price so it's gonna go ahead and do what we said and post at the minimum price well when it comes to enchanting there's one other thing that I do that gives me an edge that you should do also well weasel I've got trade skill master how much more of an edge can I get well let me show you type backslash TSM click over here to crafting click the material tabs and you can insert a custom price for the materials so while we have this open we're gonna open up the auction house and we're gonna look up and see how much temporal crystals and luminous shards go at this moment currently they're at 49 gold so we're gonna type in temp and it'll bring it up and you'll see temporal crystals listed in trade skill master says 27 gold that's half as much as they're currently going at and at the custom price that's automatically put in TSM or at least my TSM isn't updated fast enough for the current price so just type in 47 G and now TSM will know how much to list them up for we'll do the same for luminous shards now I usually do this before I craft so that way I don't queue extra stuff but since I have the crafting safety as I update this number the minimum price changes for my crafted items this is currently going for 19 gold so I'll enter it for 19 gold now we're gonna go ahead and hit that start post scan and see how much it changes and it looks like it didn't change much except for our minimum buyouts hold control spin your mouse wheel just like making that macro and you're ready to go now if you want to get competitive and really work the auction house you can use trade skill master to start a cancel scan 
it'll start scanning every item in your groups on the auction house and figuring out which ones have been undercut so that way you can cancel and repost and be the lowest price so that way you're more likely to get a sale. I've done this many a times. In fact, this auction house in my garrison, by using this technique of canceling, reposting, and restocking my sold enchants at the beginning of Warlords of Draenor, I made enough gold to pay for him in less than two days. He cost me about 50,000 gold for all the parts. 50,000 gold in two days using Trade Skill Master. And that's not even my best days that I've had. Now that we've gathered all our canceled auctions from the mailbox, we'll just hit post scan and there you go. Rinse and repeat. You're off to your gold cap ways to riches. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more gold making tips and tricks from Weasel. Thanks for watching. That's fast, easy gold. Man, I love this add-on.